Right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everybody else, welcome to yet another amazing session that we've got lined up as part of the new politics and Afrofuturism program, which is calling for Black radical imagination and pop culture as a powerful vehicle for propelling progressive social justice narratives to mainstream audiences. With a specific focus on Afrofuturism, Black activism, arts, culture, climate justice, along with politics, uh, political theory and practice. For those not familiar with the University of the Underground, and that's a bit weird, you should know who they are, but who we are by now. The University of the Underground is a free, pluralistic and transnational university based in the basement of nightclubs, which is and headquartered in Amsterdam. But as you can see, due to the global pandemic, we are all digital and online. We have got a truly, truly wonderful and lecture and session lined up for you today titled The Creation of Independent Artist Run City of, you're gonna to have to have, tell me how to pronounce this, Max, but you- Use your piss. Use your piss. <laughs> yeah. So, and uh, Max- Majid, who are you? Are you gonna say something about you? Now nah, people don't need to know who I am, it's fine. Anyway, got the wonderful Max Harric. Harric? Harric, so, yeah. Harish and for himself a ambassador and he's um born 1980 and his favorite chocolate is I'm joking, we don't know that much personal information for Max but salted Max, caramel salted caramel <laughs> Max is a freelance consultant on arts technology and ethical AI currently based in Munich he has studied communication science at RWTH Aachen and worked several years as a researcher and freelancer on the topic of creativity, innovative capability, and general artificial intelligence. As a manager at the Europe's leading innovation center, in Hemtum, he experienced and he experienced an inspiring but hardly reflected tech enthusiasm. He decided to support Munich's enthusiasm with visionary artistic perspectives and opened the embassy of Eusebius in 2017. And guys, honestly, this is just a very, very, very brief introduction. And of course, Max, feel free to let our students and let the world know who you are. If you want to elaborate a bit more, you're more than welcome to. And honestly, thank you so, so much for taking the time and effort to join us today, share your wisdom with us. And we are truly, truly grateful. And I'll hand it over to you, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for these very, very nice words. And I mean, for me, it's an honor to be here and also a little bit a duty as I'm a former alumni of the University of the Underground. And I would not be here without the university. I mean, not in this call also, but uh, like where I am at the moment. So thank you very much for this. And now I will try to share my screen with you. We love you, Max. We love you. <laughs> right. So... Is this? I hope you've got a helmet, Nelly. Sorry. So, I usually tend to oh no, uh, tend to speak too fast, and it probably will not all make sense. I will try to explain why relying on sense does not make so much sense in the end. But what I want to tell is, feel free to interrupt me at any time where you think, hey, this guy is talking, just push it. Just, we have Max, to like, clarify. Just a quick thing. Yeah. I'm correct in saying, you know, um, the title before your name, Max H, is it His Excellence, Max? Yes. It's, thank you for That's mentioning That's how this. I would inter interpret it. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, because, yeah. because as an ambassador, we officially have to use this. I feel a little bit uncomfortable, but now it feels nice that you reminded me of this. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's nothing with, uh, in, with regard to your title, which uh, Nelly repeated, but I forgot. It's your, your ma magnificent Lord, I suppose Lord May. No, uh, something like Okay. So, all right. So, my name is Max, and I'm trying to explain what the Republic of Ujupis is, why it exists, what is it good for, as far as I understood it myself, because the huge problem about the Republic of Ujupis is whenever somebody tells you about the Republic of Ujupis, these people are free to add some things which might be true or not, and you never know. 
So this also counts for, for, for this lecture right now. But as we say in Ujipis, there are no, no lies because you can never know if, if something is true what a person is telling or might come true one day. So I'm gonna start with uh, how it all originated, why it started, and then I'm gonna try to explain what I understood as the paradox politics behind Ujipis. And then I'm gonna tell a little bit about my work that I'm trying to contributing. So just to, to first first say like most of the stuff I'm presenting, I was not involved. So later there are some some slides where, where my work start my work starts, but it's mostly the work of very, very nice and great other people that I'm just presenting to you here. All right. So what is the Republic of Ujupis? It's a self-declared independent artist republic united in the UNESCO, uh, located in the UNESCO World Cultural Heritage Site of Vilnius in Lithuania, so in the Baltics. And it was established around 1997. We're not sure about this because there are contradicting numbers, but it's sure that this has an area of 0.7 square kilometers because Ujupis is a neighborhood in Lithuania in Vilnius itself and the, uh, this, this, Lenior, uh, this, this neighborhood lies behind the river of Vilnile and Uj Upe means across the river. And there are about 7,000 citizens out of which approximately 1,000 are artists. We have our own government, our own code of arms and our own constitution. So why? Did these people do this? So this is how Ujupis looked after the oops, after the breakdown of Soviet Union. It was totally abandoned, totally run down, and Ujupis was dominated by poverty and violence. Nobody wanted to live there, and there was a and, until the uh, arts university settled close by. And so, as as we were in the world, this is the <laughs> situations like this. The, the, these area, these buildings this is the only place that artists can uh, afford so they moved there and they were also suffering from this uh, from the violence and they they realized they had to change something because they were a little bit left alone by the state authority and they realized they have to change something on their own they have to take the responsibility in their own hands and they started dreaming they started with a foolish dream that the people could be brought together again those people that were fighting each other and actually killing each other these could become a community again and uh, the main street that leads through their uh, area of Ujupis uh, is, has been called the street of death and they did not call it that for fun because people were killed almost weekly because just it was so poor and so criminal and the people just were struggling to survive. So what they did is they say, okay, if the, the Lithuanian state cannot care for us for whatever reason, we make our own state, we make our own republic. And they declared it somewhere in 1997 and they made a huge celebration bringing all the artists together and they created their own coat of arms, which is this open hand with the hole in the middle. Some say it's a hole, some say it's symbol for the blisters of a hardworking artist. Uh, there, there are many, many different interpretations and every, whenever you ask somebody, you will get a new one. And my favorite one is like this saying, this, it's a hole and all the problems of the world come from people that want to hoard too much money. And if you have a hole in your hand, all the money you will receive will fall right through it and there's no chance to hoard money senselessly. And but others say it's just be open for the world and the world will pass through you. So many, many different interpretations. And what they dis, did is like they put up uh, their own constitution. They mounted it to a wall and they printed it on reflective solid steel so that whenever you looked at their constitution, you were looking at yourself because it was all about self-responsibility. It's making clear to the people you are responsible for changing something. Don't wait for any state authority. Don't wait for a policeman to save you. They cannot be everywhere and you don't want the police to be everywhere. And this, uh, this constitution is quite peculiar because it has really, really funny articles like everyone has the right to live by the river Vilnele and the river Vilnele has the right to flow by everyone. So, uh, and, and another one is everyone has the right to love and take care of the cat, which is one of my favorites. And you will see there are some cats uh, around Ujupis and uh, they're, 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 they're quite, uh, they're not anxious at all because all the people treat them nicely. 
And you see these articles that go beyond most of the uh, constitution that you might know because they also grant rights to the nature and to animals, for example. Another very important one is no one has the right to violence, no one not even state authorities. They, this is not like that. Like in Germany, we have these three forces and there's the, there's the state force in, in the form of police and so on, that which is allowed to do whatever they want to do and put uh, use force against you because you forced used force against somebody else, which uh, in Ujupi thinking and maybe in mine as well, does not make sense. Uh, of course, in the beginning, the people just tried to look like to, to, to imitate everything they knew from other states and governments. So they had their own army of 13 men, but it was quickly abandoned because, I mean, what, what do you do with an army that is not allowed to use force? So there was no use for them. It was abolished. And so what the constitution basically says is be kind. This is what it says, just be kind. Be kind to each other. I mean, people are not there. You're not the enemy of the other people. So be kind to each other and then everything will work out. And another very important article is sometimes everyone has the right to be unaware of their duties. And if you consider a constitution to be a set of rules that you have to follow, this implies that at some point, you may just simply forget to follow the rules, which makes this constitution in the end totally useless in our normal logical way to think. Because I mean, uh, if this is like the, the the loop where you can, which allows you to put to to start all the criminal things that should be forbidden by a constitution, but in the end. I think this is just the secret of the constitution that it that it makes clear that you, you it is it is not a, a perfectly rational system which you just have to obey it's just an inspiration on how you should act and it, it does not what what they as i said in the beginning they want the people to become self-responsible they don't want them to obey to some set of rules and think everything what is not regulated by the rules is uh, automatically okay. So what did they do uh, to bring the community together besides this community, uh, besides this constitution? They started making events, public events, celebrations, and there are so many things that you can celebrate in this world, whether they make sense or not, it doesn't matter. They celebrated this huge mouse trap. I don't know why they celebrated a huge mouse trap. They explained it to me. I don't speak Lithuanian. They celebrated the huge clothes pack, even better than the mouse trap. I don't know. And they made it bigger and bigger. And uh, this is the unveiling of the huge angel statue that you saw in the beginning on the central square. And this, uh, if you consider, if, if you re remember that Ujupis has about 7,000 citizens, a lot of them were present at this moment. And they, this was a big achievement bringing people together. And these things, this, they are still happening today. This is just, um, this was 2019. You, you see me here in the middle carrying a huge egg, which was wrapped in clothes. Don't ask me why there was this huge egg and they burned it in the end. And I have no idea why they did it, but it was fun and everybody joined. And uh, there, were, there was an ambassador's meeting of people from all around the world. And what, actually, what they actually achieved, and this is my favorite picture, this is a wedding happening on the former street of death so they this is for me the most uh, profound proof that they achieved their goals by making Ujupis like safe again and the street of death became a place for the lovers and this when i say they achieved their goals they they also totally overachieved their goals in the sense and that um, on the other hand side it became a kind of tourist attraction and gentrification is a big big topic and uh, as I said, these people, they, they don't rely on, um, they, they don't long for making too much money and every, everyone became rich except for the artists that started this. But this is, they say this is the way it goes and maybe Ujupis has to move on, have to, has to find new ways um, to deal with the situation and has to find new areas on, on where they can do what they want to do. Um, so about the politics. Um, this is a banner that's hanging somewhere in Ujupis, and it says Ujupis does not exist without paradox. And literally, it's Ujupis without paradox, Ujupis without a self. 
and uh, I will try to explain what they mean with paradox as far as I understood it myself. And for me, um, this, this, this constitution and this rule that they made, made for the people and the, how they contradict themselves, this is to me the secret of, of their success. And there's one example why I think this might actually make sense. And maybe somebody saw something like this. I think this is from the Netherlands somewhere. Uh, and, this, and this is called a shared space, this one in the middle. I think they have this in London as well and, and the exhibition road or somewhere. And what they did here is ex explained by the uh, inventor of shared spaces, Hans Mondermann. And he and others have suggested that by creating a greater sense of uncertainty and making it unclear who has priority, drivers will reduce their speed in turn, reducing the dominance of vehicles, reducing road casualties and improving safety for other road users. And this is to some extent what might have been achieved by the rules of Ujupis, because if you're not sure whether you're right in doing something, you, you, you're not that uh, self-confident and maybe you're not that aggressive because you don't know about the consequences and you, you better step, take a step back and be, some, be a little bit more uh, careful, especially with respect, to, with respect to other peoples. And some examples for this, and, and this is one of my favorite uh, paradoxes, Ujupis is so small there's room for all. And this is like, I don't know what it means. Somehow it makes sense. It feels good. I don't know. Okay, some some say Ujupis, oh, and this is so beautiful. And what you did there and beautiful Ar Ar artist republic like Christiania and maybe a role model for democracy. And then I have to say, well, we're not a democracy. Actually, we're a dictatorship. And this is our dictator. And this is not a joke. This is uh, Romas Lelekis, famous filmmaker. Uh, and he was our president. And how did he become our president? At some point, at some, on some day, he woke up and met with his friends and told them, you know what? I dreamed I'm the president of Ujupis. I want to be the president of Ujupis from now on. And his friend said, well, 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 stop my friend. If you are the president, then I want to be the minister and he wants to be this and that. And, and this is how the government was formed. Within a few minutes, they had their government. And this is only a part there. There are many, many more people. And uh, if you want to have an official post in Ujupis, just take it. It's not, there are no elections whatsoever. And I uh, um, this, um, maybe you know Roger Berkowitz, and uh, I attended a seminar of him, and he said ele elections alone don't make a democracy. It's, there's much more behind it, and we, we skip elections in total. It's only about what you do and how you act. And so anyone, so if somebody is interested of the people listening right now, wants to become a minister or have any other official post in Ujipis, you're free to have this as long as you just stand up and say, okay, from now on, I'm the minister for this and that. And then I will do, I don't know, for caring for the flowers in the world or whatever. And we also have, a, if you say, I want the minister for doing nothing, I, I'm sorry, this is this post is already taken. We have a minister without portfolio, but maybe there can be, maybe he needs somebody, some staff or something. And of course, people ask, hey, can't this be somehow abused the system? So if anyone can have any post, so some some bad or strange people can come and just take take the government. And yes, this is possible. And there are cases where where we had made bad experiences. And but there are always Ujupian ways to deal with this because it's all about tolerance. It's it's all about being nice to each other. So we would not kick somebody out just because we don't like. Uh, the attitudes of that person. But what the Ujibian people did, and I think this just happened three weeks ago, is they said, no, we won't kick you out. We will simply form a new government, a second government with all the people inside except for you. Of course, we won't forbid you to join our new government, but mm, this would force us to form a third government and the game would continue forever. And this is the way how they can get rid of people that don't follow their rules without being intolerant in a direct sense. So, and 
Ujupis in some way is also it's it's a kind of double exposure because people always ask so are you separatists do you pay your taxes yes all the Ujupian people still pay taxes to Lithuania they are totally loyal to Lithuania and uh, they don't want the revolution they don't want to change Lithuania they just say yes we're in Lithuania but we're also in Ujupis and you can live in both worlds at the same time and I think this is also a big secret why they get accepted to a far extent they they get accepted by many many people because they never long for being accepted for example when we unveil constitutions and this we have constitutions in all kinds of languages i think so far it's 40 constitution plaques and this was the unveiling of the estonian constitution which was unveiled in present the presence of our um, president romas lilekis our dictator on the left and uh, in presence of the um, Lithuanian president Kibauskaite and the Estonian president on the right. And this is whenever there's a new uh, constitution to be unveiled, it's always a big event with, with uh, very, very important people visiting. And we have other strong allies, like, for example, the, His Holiness the Dalai Lama. He's uh, one of our honorary citizens. And one time the Pope came to visit Vilnius and they made a constitution for him in, in, in Latin and he actually blessed that constitution. I, I, would, I would love to know what these people are talking right now and what they thought about this, but actually, yeah, well, he blessed it. And we have other very, very strong supporters, for example, <laughs> maybe, you know, this lady, this, uh, why I would be very afraid if I met her somewhere and don't want to get in trouble with that lady. <laughs> okay. And uh, also, and the, here was another um, event with the, um, the Dutch ambassador when it came, uh, when it was about unveiling the Dutch um, constitution. And she brought some other strong supporters which literally looked like that and she brought the Dutch military with her and uh, the Dutch military promised that if anyone would attack Ujupis they would be there I mean I think there is no reason to attack Ujupis uh, nobody attacked us so far but we attacked other things I mean Ujupis is friendly peaceful and tolerant but sometimes Ujupis goes to war and this is what war looks like when Ujupis goes to war and leaves its territory and this is actual actual picture of the founding of the ministry of uh, Fluxus Fluxus this art mo movement from the early 20th century and the ministry of Fluxus is about uh, occupying abandoned places like it happened to Ujupis but outside of the Ujupian territory and turning these places into uh, creative places where artists can do what they want. And uh, so this is how it looked before the battle. So and uh, of course, it looked even worse afterwards. This is after the battle and I brought some actual battle footage and I hope this video will work and it's not too loud. Can't hear anything. I think he needs to put his computer sound on. Yeah. Did you hear something? Yeah, we can't hear anything. I think you have to click and... I think when you first shared your screen, you gave the option okay. to enable computer sound. Okay, so maybe... If you, if you share your screen now, I want to, it'll give you an option at the bottom to say enable computer sound. You just click it. I also think if you remove your earphones, if you're using earphones, sometimes that's what stops the sound from the computer to go. Okay. So now I click on this. Ah, yeah, there's the sound. All right, all right, thanks. So once more, our evil army occupying this. <laughs> You, you, hear, you heard this? 
Okay, so you know you don't want to f with Ujupis, you know, now you know. <laughs> All right, and now about the work that I'm involved in, what I'm I'm doing in Munich with my amazing crew. Uh, here we are exhibiting at Ars Electronica Festival because our embassy is about building bridges between arts and technology. Each ambassador has, and we have about 500 worldwide, even more, and they all have the task to build bridges between people. And we want to build bridges between the artists and, and the tech world, because we uh, believe that arts can make technology more creative, more, in, more ethical and more accessible for society, because the world is changing because of technology and not always in the right direction. So we have to change technology and arts might be a vehicle to do this. And what we do is like we do just parties to bring people together, sometimes bigger parties, sometimes smaller parties, but we always invite our tech friends like on the left, this is Consul Roboy, which cares for naturalizations. It's the first artificially inter intelligent diplomat worldwide and a very, very nice guy. And sometimes we organize discussions with experts from artificial intelligence and in some nice surroundings and always in, in artistic surroundings. And we give talks ourselves. And this was just uh, one month ago where we first introduced the Institute for Applied Paradox, which I will uh, explain later what this might be. And also we organize events. For example, this was a uh, this was our ambassador from the US coming over to perform music composed by um, an AI, which was produced by the, our minister from Lithuania. And he was producing and he was performing this on a piano here in Munich. And this is an actual event where we, um, where we naturalized people at the University of the Underground last year in New York, when we went to Gleason's gym and found some very, very nice new citizens to give them the, the citizenship. And when we invite new citizens, it's, it's not about, it's, it's always about enabling them to, to contribute and just to feel free. And this was at another event where we had our, where we were participating in some bigger festival, some interim use of an old building and somebody who just became a uh, Ujupis citizen said, okay, cool, um, may I paint your walls? It was like, well, actually it's not our walls, but yeah, feel free. And he made this very, very nice graffiti for us. And I really like this. And it's it's not just for young people, it's for everyone. And I think it's for all ages and all kinds of people like Ujupis. I think uh, there are hardly any reasons to say, oh, I don't want to deal with this. Although I can understand for some people, it's just too silly and nonsense and we have to accept this as well. So that's fine, that's fine. And if we can't reach people in reality, we can also go to a virtual space and we, we have our cats there. So you can show your love to the cats and stuff like this. And, but of course we also take it very serious and care for the serious relationships. And this was an event we did together with the Lithuanian ambassador who came from, uh, from uh, Berlin and the um, Bavarian honorary consul, which is a supporter from the very first moment because uh, he said, well, it's a cultural project from Lithuania. It's a very a nice idea to, to bring some spirit from Lithuania over to Ujupis. And that's, that's what uh, the ambassador's job is about. And here we went to the European um, Economic and Social Forum, just to give a, make uh, one uh, Birgit Fuller, uh, the honorary citizen of, of Ujupis, because she was the one who cared for the, the German translation of the Ujupis constitution, which was a very, very important political symbol, because maybe some of you know that what the German army did in, Ujup, in, in Vilnius and in Lithuania, they did the most horrible things you can imagine. And there was not, not everyone was uh, happy when they heard there will be an, a, a German constitution for Ujupis, but she made it possible. And so we have to thank her a lot. And so what I'm doing at the moment is also like trying to leave the comfort zone and bring those messages to other areas where it's, nobody actually wants to listen to this and first of all i'm not successful with it this is just trying out what is possible with ujupis and i'm 
and I don't think this is the way it, it's going to be. But it's, sometimes it's really, really funny. This was where I was uh, invited to the digital summit of the German government, and I was just so proud to have Republic of Ujupis standing on on this badge from the, from the federal government. And this was DLD co conference where I met one of our board members, uh, Ulrich Obrist, and digital life design conference, also very, very important for technology design. And this was, as I, we are specialized on artificial intelligence, this is where we went to uh, um, Geneva to visit uh, the ITU conference on AI for good. And this was also especially funny for me because everybody's like, yeah, what is Ujupis? Ujupis is not acknowledged by the United Nations. Yeah, but we got a badge from the ITU, which is a uh, United Nations agency. But of course, this is nothing that really brings forward Ujupis. This is only how you can how we can create more opportunities. And I was always wondering because in most cases it does not work. People just don't answer me and just don't uh, react to what I say. And but sometimes it works. And I think one of the success. Uh, factors is this what I would call the maybe you know the kitty corner shot maybe some of you has seen it have seen this I have a short video what the kitty corner shot is it's it's like basically a machine gun that can shoot around the corner with a cat on top and why is this good and does it work I and mean, of course it's not good it's a weapon but the effect of it is interesting oh. now what we have here it's a kitty corner shot you can cock the the kitty here <laughs> and then you can Are shoot. Are you kidding? That's we incredible. need one second of surprise. We need one second of surprise because we would want that the, the enemy will not understand what he see, and then give us the chance to observe, to see, and to decide what to do. And as I show you, one cock. Wow! So. Yeah. So this moment of surprise when the people don't understand, this is the chance where you can talk to people that normally would never talk to you. I mean, I have this business card with Republic of Ujupis, and some people think it's actually some Balkan state that they just don't know, and they treat me like a real ambassador when I'm wearing tie or something. So and this is the moment where you have the chance. I'm just going to ask you one quick question, uh, which is actually Maximilian Yusuf Harich. Yes, can you quickly ask your question and we, we will uh, post that to the CEO of, uh, of Roland Berger. Okay, um, my name is Max Harich, I'm the ambassador of the Republic of Ujupis and I, I sometimes think we completely forget why we're all doing this. 60,000 years of technological progress only made us work, work more and more. How are we going to change this with the help of AI? Thank you, Maximilian. Okay, then I will uh, make a very short answer. Yes. I will quote uh, Arthur C. Clarke, uh, C. Clarke, who said in 1950, uh, um, we have to uh, remove uh, work so that we can all play. So I think that's the, uh, the goal. Uh, humans are not made to work. They are made to uh, develop themselves, enjoy, grow, have a sense of fulfillment. And I think this is what the sci-fi authors have been telling us. I think you're right. One thing we didn't mention is time has been accelerating, time has been monetized, and that's why we're working so hard. And I think this the relationship to time should be something that I will manage because I have to fly to San Francisco, and that uh, I hope you enjoy during the next days. Thank you. Thank you so much. Give an applause to Charles Eduardo. Yes. So, and this is a moment where I fell in love with the CEO of Roland Berger, and I couldn't believe he was answering something like this. I, I mean, he's consulting the governments of the world he's telling yeah humans are not meant to work we should enjoy ourselves citing sci-fi authors and uh, so and i tried this question at another conference but i will skip that and because i just noticed i embarrassed people because they could not give a smart answer a nice answer as as um, roland burger ceo so i thought okay this is maybe fun for a moment but it's not the way to go for Ujupis. there's no way to to have any kind of getting close to have any kind of success without making your proper homework so if you want to do something about ai you really have to get become an expert in ai and in for doing so we just try to somehow get into the game everybody was producing these principles on artificial intelligence and how companies could make themselves more ethical. So we also made our own principles and published them in the, own, in the, in the same places where others published them to just get, not, not just only use the surprise moment, but also be accepted as, as some kind of person who has some knowledge.
and we then we fed back this to this to the community of Ujupis by adding an article to the constitution of Ujupis. This is the Munich right, uh, where we made an event with in, in presence of the uh, um, foreign minister Thomas Chipaitis and of course Consul Roboy, and added this article: Any artificial intelligence has the right to believe in the goodwill of humanity, and this is the complete subversion of the recent debate because everyone is like yeah we have to program ai so that it does this and this and behave nice no it's always about the people behind it don't care about the ai care about yourself if you are trustworthy you will make good ai and there's I'm, i hope i'm not telling too much and knock on wood but there's I, I went to another event and there's a very 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 small chance that this will actually be presented in the Austrian parliament when discussing how to change their constitution. So maybe it will turn up uh, at, at some other constitution in the future. So what the most recent work is about is I have a strong problem with all this rational thinking and which goes back to René Descartes as far as, as, as I think and all this rationality and everything is so logic and so consistent. And uh, I think this brings a lot of problems and the the the, uh, the Descartian way to think is totally rational way is like the 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 outmost logical exact way but it it's only one way to think and it, it's so omnipresent that you can't realize that that you're following this it's like like you you cannot smell air or taste water because it's everywhere in your in your body that that's why you don't realize you are following this special kind of thinking that's that's the hypothesis and i think this rational thinking has brought many many or has enabled many problems like the industrialization for the disadvantage of nature the climate crisis to say and it's like the economization of everything I've, I've, you know, here you can watch professional cuddling sessions. I mean, cuddling should not be a business. That should be something we're doing all the time. And also, I think there's a almost pervert belief in absolute truth because everything you see can have different sides depending on where you look. And uh, so when you see, for example, what's going on in, uh, in the US Congress, where they're grilling Mark Zuckerberg, and so you won't take down lies or will you take down lies? I think this is maybe not the complete solution because he says Facebook should not decide what's true. And I think this true also because then strange things can happen like what uh, Billy Dee Thomas said, suddenly she got shadow banned for reasons you cannot understand, but I mean, we forced, we, we demanded from social media to have these tools to do this. And of course, they can be abused. Maybe it was just a mistake, maybe not. So. Uh, Hi, I am Robo Y. Sorry. So this is what we think about truth. And then there's the last two slides. Hi, I am Robo Y. I am lecturer for Applied Paradox. Today, I will tell you the truth. There is no truth, and this is the only truth. But please don't believe me. Now I need a drink. Douche. So this is why we are starting establishing the Institute for Applied Paradox, uh, just to, to check out what is the complete opposite of the Cartesian thinking and how you can approach this and how you get into the thinking just to further study how Usupis might have succeeded, what, what, was the, what were the principles behind it. And uh, at the same time, uh, the Ujupis University, uh, which had been existing for 20 years now, and every ambassador had the duty to, to lecture there, but the problem was nobody knew where it is. So, but now they started it and they, they made a website and they even got some official funding from the Lithuanian Arts Council. And there we're gonna make the, uh, the establish the Institute for Applied Paradox. And we're starting with a symposium on applied paradox in next January. It will happen in Munich. The date is not clear yet because uh, we are waiting the confirmation for the date of uh, some Nelly that might be present in this call. <laughs> and <laughs> we're very, very much looking forward. Sorry to about that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just to sum it all up, if you want to save humanity, we have to have logic and Thank you very, very much for your attention. Wow, that was amazing. 
amazing. Amazing to say the least. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Max. I've got a quick question first and foremost. Yes. And as questions are already starting to pour in. Have you got a national anthem? Yeah, there is one. Um, I can uh, send a link somewhere, but don't expect it to be like other. It's, it's, uh, you will see. Yeah. So uh, just yeah. let me know afterwards where I, where I can share this. Yeah, you can put it in the group chat here if you've got it. Uh, I think it would if take. Not, don't worry, just drop me a message. I'll share it with the others via WhatsApp. Yeah. Yeah. Right, D, do you want to come in and ask your question? Yeah, thanks so much, Max, for your presentation. It was extremely uh, motivational. Um, could you please elaborate on the trustworthy AI movement? Uh, what role do you see governments, as in you know, the regulations and policies they develop, um, artists, or maybe even corporations could play in this movement? Yeah, um, so I think, um... Well, in an ideal world, you would not need that movement because people would behave just, they would just be kind. So, and I think uh, this, this trustworthy movement is put forward mainly, and now I'm, I'm totally exaggerating and, and totally unfair what I'm saying right now, is it's mainly put forward by companies that are not trustworthy because trust is something it is like moss it grows everywhere where it's not toxic so you don't have to care about trust and but if you have some projects products which and this is you, you cannot blame a company for return for just looking for money because this is the reason a company was established it's it's a social con contract which is only aiming for return on invest this is the only function companies should not be forced to look for trustworthiness or something like this. This is they, this is beyond their reach. But at the same time, of course, you don't want to have companies that abuse their power and so on. So um, I think it's the government's task right now, as we don't have any other that powerful actors at the as, as, as since we don't have a powerful public. It's the government rule, uh, the government's duty to regulate somehow. But I would wish them to regulate in a way which does not give them clear rules. I think to become trustworthy or ethical, you have to design a kind of pro process, and for example, in the form of citizens' councils, because what is ethical today and here might not be ethical somewhere else and tomorrow. And so you have to create a constant debate around what is okay and what not. And when you have a, a a design an AI system running, you have to constantly check what it's doing, not just because of the, the changing, possibly saying changing ethics, but also because it's a learning system. And in most cases, you cannot predict its uh, behavior for the, for the next future, even if you designed it your own. Does this answer the question? Brilliant. Thank you so much. Jill, how are you doing? Do you want to come off mute and ask a question? Yeah, I'm very happy. Thank you so much. For, it was really nice. Uh, I just wondering if you could maybe elaborate a bit on like the opposite of the the Guardian thinking and have like maybe another example than the like I can pronounce the uh, amazing community. Sorry, what what was the beginning of the question? I think sorry. Like if you like the next the last slide, if you could maybe elaborate a bit on like the opposite of the the logic thinking. Like yeah, well, you... yeah, this, well, this is a, a, a thing I'm just trying to find out because I'm also totally stuck in logical, rational thinking. And what is the way to stop this? Uh, it's, it's definitely a way that can also make you insane. I mean, there are some people yeah. who obviously reached it. I'm, I'm pretty sure that, for example, uh, the philosopher Nietzsche reached some kind of <laughs> non-rational, non-logic thinking, but for the price that he started hugging horses. So I cannot tell it today, and maybe it is impossible to tell it in terms that are understandable. It, I think it must. It is in a. It, it will. The the way to uh, convey it will not be on a, on a linguistic, semantical, logical level. It will be something that you can feel when it's yeah. there. And- uh, Yeah, I thought of Wim Hof. 
uh, do, do you know like this Dutch guy called Wim Hof? No. I thought of him immediately. He, he was like a, a scholar, and then he said like, "Oh, I didn't find it in books because he he swims like every day in the ice water, and he broke so many world records." Just I don't know, like he he just goes to extreme sports and stuff. But he basically said like, "This is what I feel, and I, I'm finally free of not thinking with the brain." Yeah. Uh, I, I just saw the comment. No, I'm I'm uh, I'm not uh, talking against hugging horses. I actually do two projects at the same time, uh, which are related to horses. I think in Germany we say that Glück dieser Erde liegt auf dem Rücken der Pferde. So horses will bring a lot of luck to the people. So sorry if I was misleading. Has so, anyone got any other questions at all? I just wanted to seek your um, to see what kind of role do you with the Republic of Usapas play in the international community. Do you see them playing um, a role in the UN or other international institutions? Um, I think Maybe the question is more about priority of issues. Yeah, um, the the simple answer would be no. Um, Usupis cares about itself and Usupis actually it, there behind there is the ideal of having this uh, the, this Greek ideal of the small community where everyone knows everyone and Usupis does not want to conquer the world does not want to change the world but it's uh, the, the the only thing that it might be interesting is if other people want to create something like Usupis they, they can get inspiration how to do this, but uh, Ujupis would totally fail if at some point all the world would become citizen of Ujupis. That, is, that would never be. It's always about like decentralizing and having small communities that care for each other and never about ruling the world or changing. And then it's, actually, it's not about revolution or something. So maybe it would be just fun to to go to a UN meeting, but it's, they would never ask to be to have an official seat there. Well, thank you, Max. You briefly answered part of my question. Has is there any other like self declared republics around the world that follow a similar and that have been inspired by you or have a similar sort of uh, structure at all? Um, so I think. Uh, Actually, Nelly would be the expert on the other ones because she did a project on this. But uh, also, I, I think there are at least 5,000 of them. As far as I know, Ujupis is the biggest one, which does not mean it's the best one. Probably all of you heard of uh, Christiania and Copenhagen. And there are some others. Uh, Montmartre was a kind of that one, but not that institution, institutionalized. And to be honest, in most cases, it's a one-man show of literally a man putting on a uniform and declaring I'm the king of my castle here at home. And it's very doubtful for what this is good, except for your self-esteem. And there's, there are very, very nice groups, uh, Micronations and Alternative Policies uh, on Facebook. You can join this. And once you join, every day you will get to know another a new person that says, oh, now I'm going to declare my own country, how I'm going to do this. Plus, there's also every day there's a new person telling, let's make a micronational organization as uh, uh, to, to combat the United Nations. And then they only post hashtag YAMO, Y-A-M-O, yet another micronational organization, because it's like, this is not what it's about. But for some people, maybe it is. Right. And uh, right. And uh, next question, Adnan, do you want to come in? Hi, um, I, I I was reading about Usupis and it was I thought it was interesting that um, it said the, the it would based on an old idea that a good country can have no more than five thousand citizens, and I found that really interesting, uh, especially since we're discussing AI, and I wonder if how much of that perspective still remains true uh, from where you're coming from. Um, what do you mean with where you're coming from? Sorry. As in, as in, as in, like when you're engaging in these debates about AI, um, uh, and this is a, a conversation about the potential of technology um, yeah. to change how we fundamentally live and exist, um, and at the same time, um, uh, this is a republic based on 
um, an idea of the you know what is best for for humanity is within the limits yeah. of the capacity of of the yeah. human mind. That's I thought that was an interesting juxtaposition. Yeah, yeah, this is a very, very important point. Um, I mean, with most AIs, the, the, what is an AI? It's a, it's a kind of a magnifying mirror. It's, the AI looks at our behavior. The, the AI checks what we are doing. They check what we're eating, uh, how we treat nature, how, how we choose our lovers. And then the AI usually just scales this globally and thinks this is the solution for the rest of the world. And this is very, very dangerous. And I think this is totally wrong because sometimes maybe it's just a completely nonsense um, uh, observation, which is scaled over the world. But also um, people are different everywhere. And what is right here is not right somewhere else. And um, so I think the this is I don't know how to solve this technically, but AIs, if uh, an artificial intelligence system should care about the regional um, standards for ethics and regional like traditions and whatever, that's just just to care for the regional context and, and culture of the people. And it's like the way, for example, that the Facebook algorithm uh decides for us what to see in, in the preview uh this this, this can never uh, always uh, show the, the the preferences of of the whole world because some people are not interested in advertisement at all like me and so yeah so this but i have, I have no idea how to actually implement this technically right now brilliant thank you um felix just to answer your question and we'll be uploading this and so you'll get to watch all of it. But did you have a question you wanted to ask at all, Felix? Uh, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm just fascinated. I'm gutted I missed the first half, to be honest. <laughs> it sounds That's like a really good talk. That's okay. Has anyone got any other questions at all? All right, then. On that note, honestly, Max, it has been a joy been a pleasure thank you so so much thank you a lot of amazing food for thought a lot of inspiration it's quite inspirational as well and so greatly appreciated and yeah thank you so much max <laughs> and everybody maybe, too. <laughs> max, maybe you can like we can finish this session off by you singing the national anthem what do you guys think yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I, I forgot it, and everyone has the right to be unaware of their duties. So, okay. <laughs> next time. Max, do you want to sing a Christmas song for us? If I knew one, I would do it. But I'm, I'm we've sorry. already got a song. We've got Sarah's song. That's our official University's Underground Christmas song. Okay. <laughs> it's called Titties and Tanser. Was it titties and tinsels? Yeah, titties and tinsels. That's good. That's right? Tits and tinsels, yeah. Sorry, that's it. Tits and tinsels. We'll share the artwork with everyone. We've been working on it for a while, but we'll share it. Sorry. I forgot I was not muted. Feel free to contact me. I mean, we're all part of the University of the Underground, we will care for each other. So just feel free to contact me, add me on social. So. Yeah, so what's, drop your socials. Is it... Um... Uh, well, can I get, send you this afterwards? I'm yeah, just... afterwards it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. No <laughs> well, worries, guys. Thank you very much, Max. Cheers, have a wonderful day. <laughs>